Welcome to Healthcare Matters, bringing you the latest insights and innovation shaping the future of healthcare. This episode is powered by Arab Health in partnership with M42. My name is Peter Birch, and in this episode, we're exploring how artificial intelligence is transforming the practice of clinical medicine, optimizing clinical workflows, and improving patient outcomes. Today, I'm joined by Kareem Shahin, CEO of Abu Dhabi Health Data Services. Kareem, thanks so much for joining. Thank you, Peter. It's great to have you here in this conversation, and I guess to open up and talk about artificial intelligence, the topic that's on everyone's mind, and it feels like a tool that can be used anywhere in healthcare. I'd love to be able to get more specific. Where do you see artificial intelligence having the greatest impact within the healthcare ecosystem? So thank you for the question, Peter. And yes, uh, I want to give you an overview about Abu Dhabi Healthcare Data Services and the digital health solution platform at M42 before we go into AI and artificial intelligence in healthcare. So Abu Dhabi Healthcare Data Services is a company that was established in 2018. It's a PPP organization between M42 and Department of Health to run the health information exchange for the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. The health information exchange means a unified medical record for all of the nationals and the residents that interact with the providers in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. Today, we are very proud that the HIE in Abu Dhabi was the first HIE in the region. We are 100% have connectivity with all of the hospitals, clinics, laboratories, and imaging centers across Abu Dhabi. We have 2.8 billion records of data. We are connected to all of the imaging, not only the radiology reports, but the images are on the HIE, as well as any lab tests are also on the HIE. So you have the patient summary, you have the medication, you have the images, as well as the lab results. So this really serves the patient better. Wherever the patient goes, the doctor and the provider who's going to see him have access to his medical history, his medications, his allergies, and everything. So the end result is a better care for the patients and for the people of Abu Dhabi. And last year, we have successfully connected as well to Mohab so that we can see the data in Mohab and we can see the data as well in Dubai Healthcare Authority. So it's fully connected. So the doctor in Abu Dhabi can see his patient even if he got served outside of Abu Dhabi in Dubai or in the Northern Emirates. So this was a great success story. And it is the first HIE in the region. And we are very proud that we have reached an, an adoption rate for the doctors of 74.6%, which is the second highest adoption rate worldwide. And this is where you know that you're successful because the doctors are using the platform of the HIE to serve the patient better. So this is a high level about Abu Dhabi Healthcare Services. Then during our transformation journey, we did not stop on the HIE. With really the support that we get from the Department of Health Leadership, His Excellency Mansour Al Mansouri and Her Excellency Dr. Anoor Al Ghaithi, we have transformed the organization to, to become a digital health system integrator, serving not only Abu Dhabi, but also winning the projects regionally and expand, expand regionally. We support other organizations and other countries to transform their digital health journey and their e-health journey with the experience and the success that we had in Abu Dhabi. We're very proud of that, and we try to help everyone who come and ask us for an advice. And, and this is how the organization have really transformed over the years. I think about the, uh, the journey that different countries go on and regions when it comes to HIE, because uh, in different parts of the world, we're at different stages. It's remarkable to hear about, you know, the success of the uh, adoption uh, in Abu Dhabi in particular. And then also, I think you started to touch on, you know, 
it doesn't just stop at the HIE. That's almost like the foundation level. So by by putting this in place, you know, the work isn't done. It almost like it starts now. What what, what kind of build? Tell me more about what's built on from there. So so the the, the basic for any healthcare system for a nationwide, because we focus ADHDs focusing on national solutions outside of the boundary of the hospital, not within the boundary of the hospital. The boundary of the hospital, you have the EMRs of the world and the LISs and the risk systems that within the hospital himself. But we focus on the national platforms and national initiatives. The basic of this national initiatives is really to have a unified medical record, which is the HIE. And this is on the clinical side. Then you have the financial side, which is not less important, where you build the health insurance bus. And and now we're working very closely with the Department of Health on Shafafia, which is the platform of insurance in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. When you have both of these platforms, then the limit is the sky when it comes to application that you can implement on top of this data. Today, this is all clinical and financial, but the Department of Health and the vision of the Department of Health was beyond that because they have invested significantly in genome sequencing. And today, the UAE have almost sequenced more than 780,000 of the population genome sequencing. So if you look at the healthcare industry, when it comes to Abu Dhabi and UAE and what they have really accomplished, you have the genotype data, you have the phenotype data, which is the clinical and the medical, and also you have the financial data. But if we look at the genotype and the phenotype data, this is very powerful because you can have a true precision medication and precision medicine. You can have a true prediction of the diseases of the population that will come in the future. And also you can limit the, the fraud in the system because you, everything can be seen. So extra expenses unnecessarily test that the patient could suffer from and, and medication that is not mapped with his, the pharmacogenomics reports that have been launched with the Department of Health that, that is not aligned with the genetic sequencing of the, of the specific patient. All of these could be avoided with the data that we have. Now, this data doesn't stop here, honestly, because this data can be used as well for drug discovery. And this is the second layer where you build a true life sciences industry because you have data and it's not only we have the data, but we have a super high quality data where it can be super useful for the pharma industries for the clinical CROs organization, as well as for the venture capital to have the rights to access certain molecules. And this where these are the fuel to build a robust and a couple of trillion dollar life sciences industry. It's fascinating to think about how multifaceted it can be. And when you've got the initial focus of, you know, improving patient outcomes in that clinical setting, but then also the benefit it has right down through to R&D and the life sciences side, and then right up through at the population level to make those informed decisions, which I think would provide inspiration or at least motivation for other regions that might be on a, a journey uh, with HIE that, that could be feeling like, well, this is a lot of groundwork, but where are we seeing the benefit? I would imagine too, you know, in this age of artificial intelligence and emerging technologies, and you already touched on the, the genomic sequencing part as one, but if I looked at AI, you know, you're not going to be able to apply emerging new technologies you're not going to be able to apply emerging new technologies to, um, you know, a clinical setting if you don't have the right data there. So it sounds like by having the, the clean set, you can actually do some really cool things above. Am I on the right track here? Exactly, 100%. It's, it's a spot on. Without the right data and the high quality of data that we have, you cannot apply the AI technologies and the AI platforms. So now you have the HIE. It's full of the medical information data. For God bid. If anyone go to an oncologist and is a cancer patient, if the doctor want to see the data and the file of the patients, it can take him a couple of hours really to study the file of the patient. We have developed with the Department of Health, it will be launched hopefully very soon, an LLM model 
on top of the HIE to really read the data of the file of the patients, the medical data. So the doctors can use the LLM on top of the HIE to access the medical information. And what will take four hours from the doctor can take 15 minutes because we have used the LLM model. And this is where the use of the, LR, the AI will make a difference in terms even of the time of from the provider as well a direct impact for the patient because no no information will be missed from the file so so this is one of the scenarios where we have implemented also successfully with the department of health we have implemented uh, Oris TB, which is a radiology ai tool that we have tested it in abu dhabi that that reads the 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 chest x-ray images to identify if you have a TB or not for residency and Iqama renewal. This decreased the time significantly from the radiologist to read it because it's all automated, it's all using AI, which have been tested and which have a 98% accurate successful rate. In case if there is something was triggered as it's a positive result, then we make the human interact to confirm that it's a positive result. But other than that, 95% of the cases goes without a human interaction because it's a negative cases. So we reduced the, the time the radiologists spend on reading images unnecessarily. And this is something which is implemented today in a couple of the centers in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi for the visa scanning and visa issuing. Yeah. What a great example. And I, I, I like that, you know, that, that's how healthcare should be, you know, where wherever we can remove those unnecessary tasks, as you say, that the radiologists are doing or other clinicians and, and utilize AI to then allow the clinicians to come in at the right time to provide care. That's really powerful. I guess lastly then to, um, you know, looking ahead, we've, we've got some great examples as we've seen uh, coming through by pulling data together and being able to build on that. What's exciting you about the next, you know, the long-term vision, the, the five, 10 years from now and, and what we can really do now that we've got this, this baseline of information? So, so what, what excites us is that our objective always with the Department of Health as M42 as well, M42 Department of Health and ADHDS, our objective always that Abu Dhabi is ahead of the curve and spearheading the international digital health transformation and to be ahead of all of the countries. And today, we, we are ahead by, by big steps when it comes to digital health and the innovation that we have in the digital health. The objective is really to implement more AI tools and to build the life sciences industry and to merge between the genotype and the phenotype data to, to, to have more drug discovery, to attract more pharma companies in the, in the country and to have precision medicine for the population of the UAE. And at the end of the day, we all serve the patients and the patient is a patient centric healthcare system to make sure that they are served well, have a better quality of life and served better by the, by the technologies that we are using. It's an inspiring vision. I know the world's gonna be watching on with interest as you go on that journey. So Kareem, I really appreciate you making the time to take us through that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for tuning in to the Healthcare Matters podcast. Make sure you're subscribed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube, so you can catch all the future episodes. This episode was powered by Arab Health in partnership with M42. My name is Peter Birch. I'll see you next time.